Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com, and today we're going to talk about, again, a central, very important topic with fractions, absolutely critical for you to master, and that is called simplifying fractions, how to make them simpler. Uh, so what we're going to do is show you how fractions can be changed from sort of a complicated form to a simple form, and I think I'll tie it in with the previous lesson and show you that this is really not that different than what we did before where we were just renaming fractions and, and showing how a fractions can be equivalent. So many times in problems when you're adding or subtracting fractions in the, in the future, then what you will get as a result will not be as simple as it could be. And in math you like to keep things as simple as you can. So a lot of times what we're going to do is do our operation, get our answer, and then we're going to take that answer and make it as simple as we can. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute, but just keep that in the back of your mind. We're just trying to make these fractions look a little bit better. And I've already showed you that two different fractions can look completely different, but actually represent the same thing. We told you that, we talked about that, um, and so what we're doing now is trying to take these fractions and make them look a little bit simpler, but even though they might represent the same thing. All right, so let's just uh, dive right into it. Um, what if we have four eighths? Four eighths. And I'd like to uh, make this fraction as simple as I can. So I'm going to rewrite this guy again. Now, one crucial thing I need to mention to you is to remind you that in the previous sections, we said that you can multiply a fraction by anything you want as long as you multiply the top and also the bottom at the same time. Said that many, many times. We did lots of examples. All right, now here's the other half of that. You can also divide a fraction by anything you want as long as you divide the top and the bottom at the same time. So again, it's, it's like that balanced seesaw that we talked about, that teeter-totter, right? You can do anything you want as far as multiplying and dividing a fraction as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. We already talked about the multiplying part. Now I'm just telling you that division, you can divide the top and the bottom by the same number as well, and it continues to keep the fraction balanced. So in this case, is there a number that I can divide the top and also the bottom of this fraction by that will make it divide evenly? And the, and the answer is yes, 4 and 8. It looks like I can divide the top by 4, but if I do that, I kind of also need to divide the bottom by 4. When I do it like this, as long as I do it to the top and the bottom, then it doesn't really change what fraction I have. It just changes the way it looks. So when you look at this, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I have 1 half. So this is what you would call a simplified fraction. So what you do is you look at your answer and you ask yourself again, is there a number that I can divide into the top and the bottom, other than the number 1, that will make this any simpler? And the answer is no. I can't divide anything else into the top and the bottom of this fraction, other than the number 1. Uh, because in, nothing else will make it simpler. If I divide by 1, I'm just going to get 1 half again. That doesn't make it simpler. I need to, to be able to divide it by something other than 1. And in this case, I can't. So it's done. This is what you call simplest terms. So you might say, you might see on a uh, test, put the fraction in simplest terms. You might also uh, see something like simplify. The fraction. So we call this a simplified fraction. You might also see it called lowest terms. It's important to understand that all three of these terms mean the same thing. If you see somebody's asking you to make a fraction in simplest terms, or lowest terms, or simplify it, or something like that, those are all saying the same thing. Try to divide this thing by something that will give you something simpler. So let me do a couple more examples and then we'll just talk a little bit more about how important this is. Let's say we have the fraction 3 6 and I want to make it into lowest terms or simplify this fraction. So I'll rewrite it and I'll ask myself, is there something that I can divide the top and also the bottom of this fraction by to make it simpler? And the answer is yes I can. I can divide by 3 on the top then I also have to divide by 3 on the bottom. And when I do that 3 divided by 3 on the top is just 1. 6 divided by 3 on the bottom is just 2. So this, again, is simplified or lowest terms. Now look at what we have here. Doesn't it look a little bit odd that our first problem we got 1 half as the answer and our second problem we got 1 half as the answer? How can that be? 
How can it be that we, we get the same answer for both of these problems? Th what this is telling us is that all of these fractions are basically the same thing. I mean, when you think about it, what does one half of a sandwich look like? You take a sandwich, cut it in half. That's what it looks like, right? Well, what does it look like when you have three-sixths of a sandwich? If you cut it into six equal pieces, but only actually eat three of those pieces, then that's half the sandwich, which is the same thing as this one. If I cut the sandwich into eight pieces, but I only eat four of them, I've still eaten half a sandwich. So all of these are the same thing. When I take this guy and divide by something to get something simpler, it's, you're arriving at something that looks different, but it's actually the same thing, all right? So the other thing I want to mention before I go forward is just to kind of absolutely drill that in and show you. If I have this fraction and I'm going to represent the top one, I have to cut it into eight pieces. So here is four pieces and here is eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight pieces. That was the first fraction I had and I'm going to shade four of these pieces because this is how much of the pizza I have. This is four eighths. And what we're saying is that this is actually equal to one half. So let's go ahead and draw one half. So if this is, this is cutting the pizza into two pieces, because I have a two on the bottom up here, this is the same amount of pizza as what I had before. So this is one half, but we're also saying that because this problem just happened to have the same answer, it should also be equal to three six. So if I put this guy here and I divide this into six pieces, then I'm gonna go across the top and then I'm gonna go down here and then I'm gonna go down here. This should be roughly six equal pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then out of six pieces, if I only have three of them in that fraction, here's one piece, here's two pieces, Here's three pieces. These are all the same thing. So three sixths is the same thing. So I just like to show graphically every now and then, you know, eventually we're gonna drop the graphing. We're gonna drop the pictures. Um, you just need to trust after a while that you can multiply a fraction by anything you want on the top and the bottom. You can also divide a fraction by anything you want as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. And when you do that properly, the fraction will look different, but it's actually the same thing. So let's get some more practice with this, simplifying fractions business. And let's say we have 6 fifteenths, and we want to simplify this. So what we will have is 6 fifteenths, and we want to see if we can divide it by something. What could we divide the top by? Well, we could divide the top by 2, because 6 divided by 2 does work. But if we divide 15 by 2, that doesn't give us anything even. It doesn't divide evenly, so it doesn't work. Can we divide the top by 3? Yes, we can. So let's go ahead and divide the top by 3. And if we divide the bottom by 3, that actually goes evenly also. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 15 divided by 3 is 5, because 5 times 3 is 15. So the answer is 2 fifths. 2 fifths is the simplest form of this fraction. You cannot continue dividing anything here, because there's nothing else that'll work that'll make it simpler. If you divide by 1, then it doesn't change. If you divide by anything else, then it doesn't divide evenly. All right, let's go and do the last one here, 4 sixth. So we'll do 4 over 6 and ask ourselves, what can we divide the top and the bottom by to give us a simpler fraction? Uh, we can divide by 2 on the top. We can divide by 2 on the bottom. Notice that the number 3 would not work. We could divide the bottom by 3, but we can't divide the top by 3. It doesn't go evenly. So 2 is the only one that really works. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 2 thirds is the answer. You can't divide this by anything further, so we say that's simplified, or that's lowest terms, or that's sim the simplest fraction uh, that we can uh, get there. So this is going to happen a lot. We're, we're getting practice with this now because when you end up adding and multiplying fractions later, you're going to get an answer and you're going to have to simplify it every time. You're going to be able to look at this and figure out, is this simplified or not, yes or no? And if it's not simplified, then we need to do what we need to do by dividing by something to make it simplified. So if there's anything you pull out of this lesson is that you need to remember that you can multiply or divide any fraction by anything you want as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. Here we're dividing to make it simpler, but notice if you go backwards, if you start here and go this way, 
If I multiply by two on top and bottom, I get four sixth because two times two is four, three times two is six. So multiplication and division are kind of opposites of each other. And because of that, you can do either one to a fraction as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue getting more confidence and practice with simplifying fractions.